Morning, everybody, and blessed Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, the last Sunday in the octave of Easter. The Easter season continues for uh, six more weeks. Is that right? Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, five more weeks, I guess. Five, six more weeks, five more weeks, whatever it is. Um, six more weeks, I think. It was turned down somewhere over the rainbow. Lynn Miller and his amazing orchestra. I was told yesterday, sometimes my music is too loud. I would agree. I usually turn it down. Let's talk more about humility. Because the real, most humble persons in all of creation is the Holy Trinity. And uh, our biggest look in humility, of course, is Jesus Christ. Watching the way he lives and acts. And one of the things about humility is humility is not timid. That's a misunderstanding of humility that a lot of us as disciples kind of get into our minds that um, humility is timid. Jesus is humble all the time, but Jesus acts with amazing confidence at times and boldness. And that's something we should be uh, mindful of as we reflect on our own call to be humble. Because to be humble is, is ultimately to know yourself before God. Not just to know yourself, but to know who you are in relationship to God. You know, the dictum of you know, know yourself is true. But for Christians, it's only know yourself in relationship to God. As a beloved son or daughter, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, as a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Because God acts with humility throughout all of creation. It's, it's harder to see in the Old Testament because the uh, humility of God is often met with uh, the perceived frustration of God dealing with the errant children of Israel. That uh, God is more vexed and tried by Israel than by anybody else, by their own testimony. I mean, that's what's so amazing about the Old Testament. They don't sugarcoat how lousy they are at keeping the covenant. And the New Testament continues that, you know, the only one we're trumpeting as perfect is God. All the rest of us need grace. Now, here's the amazing thing. The Virgin Mary is free from sin, yet she too needed grace and was full of it. She was the perfect soil for grace to bear the most abundant fruit. Anyway, that's a sideline. So anyway, this Divine Mercy Sunday... The humility of God wants humanity reconciled with him and with one another and goes to the extreme of suffering and death to prove that. You know, and that's, that's what Jesus Christ comes to do. We have to be absolutely sure of that. He's given us the church and this sacramental communion in him, first of all, to be free from sin to repent of our sins, to reject our sins, to desire real holiness. That's stage one. And then, because we are striving for that, we may not be perfect at it, but we are striving to be holy, we can lose our fear of suffering and death, both of which are horrible realities. But for people free from sin, they don't have a hold on our hearts. So that's something we want to be mindful of. Jesus comes and, you know, I, I've been preaching about it this week. Jesus is not known by his face. He's known by his actions. And the action that we see the risen Lord doing is breaking bread with uh, disciples on the road to Emmaus, appearing in the room and revealing the wounds of his passion, his hands, his feet, his side, uh, preparing fish for the apostles when they're fishing like how he met them. It is the actions that reveal Christ, not the face. Even though once they see him, they, they know it's him. 
which is pretty interesting. You know, what is so different looking about the risen Christ that he's not well known to people who spent three years with him. I mean, it's something to ponder. We know the, the risen Christ can be touched. The risen Christ can eat things. But um, the part of the mystery of, of Jesus. Anyway, nobody more humble than God for which we're to thank and reflect on what real humility is. Have a blessed Sunday, everybody. Seek uh, God's mercy at all times.